Yo, welcome back to Divin Biology. So SPM is coming soon, right guys? So on the 26th of January, I will conduct an online last minute SPM class under TTC Education, which we will basically do like a last minute revision right before our bio SPM. So in this class, what will we mainly focus are doing a lot of questions, which are questions that I think this year have very high chance to come out in SPM and also focus on key topics lah, for this year's SPM. So the time will be from 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. It's online now. So if you're interested, you can WhatsApp this number or even DM my Instagram, David Biology. I'll see you guys very, very soon. Yo, welcome back to Davian Biology. So I'll be doing a three-part mini-series of state trial video for students that are asking for 2024 Bio SPM. Lah. Okay, but let's say if you are form 4 form 5 students in 2025, actually uh, these videos are very useful also because all these questions are these state trials. School teachers like to use these kind of questions for your exam. So yes, yeah, a good revision. Yeah, so by the way, in this three-part video, right, the first part, uh, as you can see in the title already, I'll be doing form 4, chapter 4, 4.5 nucleic acid specifically. Uh, then we have chapter 7, form 4, cellular respiration. And the last one, I'll be doing a full state paper, Malacca 2024 paper. Now, why Malacca paper? That's because most of the questions in the paper, right, uh, have a lot of topics that most teachers predict that will come out in this year's SPM. Lab. So, which means a lot of like, so hot topics lah. Okay, so yeah, that's why I will pick quite a lot of questions to do together in that video lah. So, for Form 4 Chapter 4, now why nucleic acid specifically? Now, Form 4 Chapter 4 for the past three years SPM, right, only came out once. And it came out carbohydrate, the easiest one and the most common one actually. So, the rest are actually not very hard also, like protein, lipid, water. Nucleic acid, quite a lot of you will still struggle lah. The hardest one, lah, DNA ma. Okay, so we do now, straight away. So for this question, MRSM 2024. So the most basic thing they will ask you is, now they'll give you a nucleotide. Now what's nucleotide? Nucleotide basically is the monomer of a nucleic acid. Okay, so it's the monomer of your nucleic acid. So monomers basically forms a polymer. So basically, right? Okay, nucleotide, like this ma. Okay, so this is the monomer. So basically, a lot of nucleotide, if they join together, a lot of monomer, a lot of um, this nucleotide join together, right? Basically, you'll get what we call as a polynucleotide. So just like a monomer forms a polymer. So two, a polynucleate chain, right? Now, if there's two polynucleate joined together, which they will join something like this, I'll teach you how to draw in a moment. Question wants you to draw one. Now, this is basically what we call as a DNA. Okay. So, two polynuclear chain joined together forms what we call as a DNA. You know, when we watch movies, right? DNA looks like this. Ding, ding, something like that. Now, if you open it up, there are two strands, which both of these are the two polynuclear type chain that I just drawn over here. Look. So, if they ask you to describe the structure of, uh, state the structure of a DNA, right? We call it a double helix structure. So, that's a double helix structure, okay, because there are two polynucleotide chains. And then, over here, they ask you to label um, the nucleotide, which there are three structures here, one round, one pentagon, and one odd shape thingy. So, the round one, it's called a phosphate group. Now, so for those who cannot remember this or don't remember this at all, so I remember it as like Olof, Fos, Olof, round, and this is a pentagon shape, right? So, basically, it's called a pent sugar. Now bear in mind there are two types of pentose sugar, one in the DNA, one in the so-called RNA, which also we'll talk about it later. So in DNA, right, the pentose sugar is called deoxyribose. Now most of the time you have to be very specific, deoxyribose or ribose sugar, but in this question, you can just write the general pentose because they didn't tell you this is DNA or RNA, right, they just give you a nucleotide, so you're allowed to write pentose for this one definitely. But let's say if the question they give you, like, let me find one here, uh, like this, for example. Now, very obvious, very specific, this is a DNA because you have two polynucleotide chain. The RNA, by the, way, by the way, only has one. So if they give you two polynucleotide chain like this, this is DNA. DNA, you must label this as uh, deoxyribose if the question asks. Now, moving on. Um, now, the last one, this is called the nitrogenous base. Now, nitrogenous base they don't come in fixed shape because there are four kinds of nitrogenous base which carry four different types of what we call as genetic codes. Genetic codes, they come in A, T, 
G C. You can remember as aku tak guna condom. So different genetic codes will have different shape lah. So basically, genetic codes forms the the genetic information in your DNA lah. Now the next one, drawing. They ask you to draw the DNA structure. So they draw half of it. They want you to complete the other half. So you have your phosphate group, pentose sugar here, or deoxyribose sugar here, and the nitrogenous base. Now to complete the other half, right? You want to start with the nitrogenous base first. With the nitrogenous base, right? You just draw like the mirror image of it, or like a puzzle like that. If it's like this, I must draw something that fits exactly. I believe everybody knows this, right? Like here is like that. So here must poke inside like that, lor. Okay, now once you're done already, the next thing is you have to draw the pen, the pentose sugar here or the deoxyribose. Now it's not draw exact the same thing, uh. you have to draw inverted, means you have to turbal it. So very similar also. You see uh, the pentagon like this, the triangle have is joined to the line here. So same, the line joined to the triangle of the pentagon like this. Okay, now I'm going to one shot draw the whole pentagon like that. Then at the triangle of the pentagon here, there's one more line going up to join to the phosphate. Just now it was going up, so now I have to go down. Inverted the balik also, so going down. Join to the phosphate group here. Okay, right. so you just have to draw the same exact structure down here. There's one more line we have to draw. See, there's one more line that's connecting the two nucleotides together. So where do I connect that line? Okay, so just now the triangle here, I go down, over here, join to it. Now I realize a lot of you all will join like this. Wrong. You cannot, just remember, you cannot have two lines drawing at the same point. You must go down the triangle here, go down towards the pentagon, and then draw that line. Okay, done. And oh, one more thing, sorry, not done yet, so sorry. The bond, the hydrogen bond. So you can draw like this two lines and three lines. So that is the format. Now one got two, one got three lines. So that is the hydrogen bond. If the question asks you to label these, yeah, they are bounded together by hydrogen bond. The hydrogen bond specifically links the nitrogen space together. Now, next question, explain the effect to the inheritance if DNA is degraded. If somebody has DNA cha -cha, your characteristics will be cha -cha, right? Okay, so basically, you then very hard to pass on this genetic information from one generation to another. Let's say my, my hair punya gene got problem. Okay, so therefore, when I give birth to someone, the child punya hair may be cha cha. Ah, that's why I say here, genetic information for one generation cannot be uh, inherited to another, and the characteristics cannot be determined. So they, maybe the child punya hair uh, got problem or something like that. Lah. Okay, so nothing much. You can pause the rep yourself. Then, Turanganu 2024. So there are two nuclear acids here, very obvious. Got two chains one, DNA, one chain one, RNA. Okay, let's also briefly like, go through the difference uh, because questions also very often like to ask DNA, RNA, you know, difference. So the first one you can see in the diagram already, two polynucleotide chain, which is right here. And this one is one polynucleotide chain. And the other one you can say is, okay, just remember, two is always longer. So the polynucleotide chain here is long. This one is short. Uh, just now remember we labeled the the sugar, the pentose sugar, there are two types. So the pentose sugar is based on the name. DNA, when you have pentose sugar is deoxy ribose sugar. This is ribose. And the last one is the nitrogenous base, which later we talk more about it. So just now we say ATCG, right? But in RNA, right, the base that they have is AUCG, the T timing change into U. Uracil. So we say it has uracil, nitrogenous base, and they just write shuffle nitrogenous base. This one has uh, T, tiny nitrogenous base. So these are the four differences that they have. Lah. Moving on, they gave us a nucleotide that forms P, which is our DNA. They tell us that the nitrogenous base that they have here, for example, is cytosine. Name one other example of nitrogenous base. So besides C, you still have. A, P, and G. So either one will do. So for this question, you have to spell the whole thing out. So A, adenine, T, thymine, C is the question given already, cytosine, and the last one is guanine. And next one, they ask a bit of general question about DNA again. Explain the importance of nucleic acid in a cell. So 
nucleic acid basically is the DNA. DNA basically have genetic information inside, like carries inheritance information, carries genetic information of the cell. So what's the importance of the, uh, the genetic information? It's basically to determine characteristics. Just write characteristics of a cell, of a living organism. Because all of us, we have different characteristics, right? Some of us hair is curly, some is straight, some is black, some is brown. Because all of us have different genetic information, different DNA. Last one, contain genetic codes. Now the ATCG, right, doesn't just carry your characteristics. It's also very important for protein synthesis. In a while, we will talk about this, which the transcription translation process one. Yeah, so basically how an RNA is formed, right? Okay, let me just mention this. A lot of you think that I cut DNA into half, I get two RNA. That's not correct. RNA is actually copied from DNA. How so? Through a process called transcription. So transcript means copy. Okay, so this one later I will mention a bit more. So we continue this question here first. Okay, now next 1.2 shows the sequence of nitrogen based in the polynuclear chain. So the, the genetic code gave us here in the DNA is ATGCTT. State the match for nitrogenous based sequence of polynuclear change after the process of transcription to form RNA. So after if I transcript to form RNA, now even though we say transcript is copy, but you don't copy word for word, code for code exactly. Meaning if the DNA have these six codes, right, it will not be exactly the same inside the RNA, even though we say transcript is copy. Now during transcription, right, the genetic codes are copied according to their uh, their, their pair, their base pairing, meaning to say the A always pair with T, G always pair with C. Aku tak guna condom, follow this sequence. So, which means, oh, but however, in RNA, there's no T timing that we mentioned earlier. So, in RNA, it's A, U, G, C. The U becomes T. Okay, meaning to say, if here is A, the pairing of A is T. But RNA doesn't have T, right? In RNA, the T becomes U. So therefore, this is U. You receive instead of RNA. T matches with A. Now, a lot of you make this mistake, you right? T, you all will match with U. No. T, when your pairing is A. A exists in RNA. So T is A. A is U. Then G, C, C is G. Same again. T, A, T, A. So that's the answer for this question. And our last question is actually about water, 4.1 in this chapter. A uh, very easy question they ask. Like this is what our moms always tell us. Uh, sick, drink water. Uh, you fever, never drink water. Uh. So that's why you fever the time, must drink a lot of water. Okay, our mom actually correct. So state the importance of the above recommendation as one of the efforts to overcome problem of fever. So why fever must drink a lot of water? Now this is basically physics. Water has high specific heat capacity which the benefit of it, it absorbs heat from your body, so cools down, reduce your body temperature. So you can say which absorbs heat energy from body. And you can say it decreases body temperature. And for the final one that I will do is this one, uh, Malacca. I will do the whole paper anyways. Okay, but like, I just focus on question B, this one. Okay, we're leading, we're leading more to our nuclear acid. So here they give us uh, the process, the sequence of protein production in the cell. So just like we mentioned, right, the genetic codes in DNA helps in synthesize of protein. Okay, in this question, we're going to talk about it. So basically, DNA undergoes transcription to form mRNA. mRNA will carry out a process called translation to form protein. Okay, now what does this whole thing mean? So inside a cell, let's say it's the nucleus. DNA is inside the nucleus. Now, DNA has genetic codes. They can control the ribosome to synthesize protein. However, the codes cannot leave the nucleus because once the codes leave the nucleus, the ribosome then use the code, then the code gone. Then this DNA will be gone forever. So therefore, I have to copy down the code. So this the copy process we mentioned earlier is called transcription. It's like you borrow a book from a library, like you find something very useful, but you cannot take the book away from the library, you have to return the book. Now. So it's like you photo step the part that you need, you copy down the part that you need. Ah, so this is called transcript. I copied it into mRNA, messenger RNA. Then this RNA will carry it to the ribosome. 
and then it will translate the code to become protein. So this is what the question is asking here. Transcript and translate is all you have to say to get these two marks. So I just have to say, number one, uh, the NA undergoes transcription to form M. Don't forget the M stands for messenger, RNA. Then the mRNA monitor undergoes translation to in ribosome to synthesize protein. Easy. That's how you answer this question. Okay, so you can just pause and write it down if you wish to. So that's it for nucleic acid. If you have anything that you're not sure want to ask or you have any recommendations that you any recommend topic that you want me to do, I'll try my best to do it. You can suggest in the comment anything you can ask. Lah. So all the best. I'll see you in my part two video, chapter seven, cellular respiration. Goodbye.